energy versus cues versus scent. And we'll take video, for example. Right, let's let, let just look at video, right? Video, I cannot smell you. Danica, you look like you smell really good, but I don't know, right? I just have to guess, right? You smell amazing. Okay, I, that's what I thought. So <laughs> we take smell out of the equation. Right? We take yeah. smell out of the equation. I am looking at a couple of different modes that you are transmitting things to me. So because we've removed smell, because we've removed touch, right? We can't sure. touch, we can't shake hands, we can't give a hug. We are focusing on words, so verbal, vocal, and nonverbal. Mm -hmm. And so I think that when we talk about energy, what we're actually talking about is how we are transmitting signals with those three modes. So the first one is words, obviously the first few words we say. The second one is gestures, posture, facial expressions. Mm -hmm. And the last one is our vocal, so how we say our words. Sure. And what research has found is about 60 to 90% of our communication is actually just in the nonverbal category. So when we say energy, I think when someone walks into a room, we are taking in their gait, like how they're walking through the room. We're taking in how they wear their clothing. We're taking in how they say hello. Here's a really specific example. When we are anxious, when we are nervous, when we are afraid, let's take those, those skydivers, right? I guarantee you, if you were to ask those skydivers right before they jumped out of a plane to say hello, to answer their phone, hello, when we are anxious or afraid, our vocal cords tense. And I'm going to do it for you right now so you can hear. So right now my vocal cords are relaxed because I'm, I'm mm -hmm. having a good time. We're chatting. But if I were to go into anxiety and I tighten my vocal cords, you can actually hear that I go a little higher on my vocal pitch. And also mm -hmm. I get a little bit more vocal fry. Mm -hmm. So when my vocal cords are tight, it's very, very hard to get out of fry. And so I talk higher and also you can hear it. And the more I tighten my vocal cords, the harder it is for me to get any kind of resonance. So what happens is when people are really anxious, they'll say, hey, hello. And we can hear it. Yeah, you know, it's like the ready to cry sort of sound too. Oh, yes. Actually, that's a very good point. Yes. Yeah. It's exactly what we sound like. That's way me when I'm about to cry. <laughs> so we're listening, right, without even realizing it too. Yeah. When someone walks in the room or hops on video and says, hey, guys, or let's take yeah. it down a notch. This is the most anxious. Hey, guys. Okay, that's the most anxious. Yeah. And the next level, which I hear very often, is someone answers at the top of their breath. And this is because they've been holding their breath the whole time. They're a little bit nervous. They go, Hey, yeah, totally. Hello. Yeah. And we're at the top, we're at the top of our breath. We are accidentally signaling um, anxiety versus now I'm going to do the opposite. So, what happens when I relax my vocal cords? And by the way, you can try this with me. At, so, hopefully, you can try this at home. If you don't, if you don't mind, this is a really helpful exercise. So, what I want you to do, Danica, if you're willing, is yeah, I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to say hello at the top of your breath. So, hello. Hello. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Way higher yeah. versus. So now I want you to take a deep breath and I want you to say hello on the out breath. It's going to sound like this. Hello. Hello. Right. Yeah, totally. Totally different. So if you try that, I want you to ask yourself, what voice are you using? Yeah. When you're on video calls, presenting, talking to your partner, talking to your kids in an interview, are you up here? Hey, everyone. It's so good to see you. Or are you down here? Mm. That is the, that's energy. I think we're yeah. talking about energy. We can literally hear it. Totally. Right? What's the hear. exhale hello conveying? Because obviously you said anxiety at the top. Is it conveying confidence or is it just relaxed? Is it power? Hmm. Okay. So this is, oh, this is a, a tricky question. I'm going to answer it with another study because I, I can't help it, which is <laughs> <laughs> our, vo our vocal cords are very tied to the rest of our body, our breath, our chest, the space we're taking up. So one study, University of British Columbia found that winning athletes, when they win a race, they take up as much space as possible. So they expand their chest. They tilt their head towards the sky. They expand their arms. They often jump up and down. Yeah. When we take up space, it literally relaxes our vocal cords. It allows us to take in more breath. So it could be pride. It could be confidence. It could be relaxation. So when I'm at the lowest end, by the way, if I just, I'm going to um, scrunch my shoulders up and I'm going to tighten my jaw and I'm going to um, go like a defeated athlete, a defeated athlete typically tucks their chin to their chest. No matter how relaxed my vocal cords are, it's still really, really hard to give you my full vocal power. Like you can literally hear it. So the moment I maximize my, my space, the lower my shoulders, I tilt my head up, I expand my chest, you can hear it in my voice. There are hundreds of these vocal cues that we are listening for. And so that energy that we pick up from someone, we go, oof, it's because we are listening for anxiety and we don't want to catch it. 
Mm. We don't want to listen to someone, Mm. buy from someone, be with someone, date someone, love someone, trust someone if they're anxious. So can we cue ourself? Like, as you're saying all these things, it seems like, okay, they all, you know, they all say like, if you're stressed, just take a deep breath or whatever. So like, can we, if we know we get some social anxiety, do we arrive at the situation and just kind of go, hi, you know, like whether you're starting a call or whether you're going to meet someone or walk into a meeting or a job interview, can you cue yourself? And what are some of the, one of those things that you can do to cue yourself? Cause first off there are you just to like give more information for cues, your new book, yeah. there are yeah. four different categories of the cues and maybe you could say those and then, um, and then go into what we can do to like feel more relaxed and feel more confident. Yes. So you just, said it perfectly, which is, I think we must cue ourselves. We Mm. have to cue ourselves. Mm. And we don't realize that we are constantly cueing ourselves. When we are asleep, I think we don't realize how often we are setting ourselves up for failure or success, right? So part of this is understanding the cues you're sending to yourself. I love it when people say, oh, take a deep breath or pause for a second, because the secret benefit of that, the reason why we like to take a deep breath or (sighs) we try to relax our body secretly. That also makes us sound better. Mm -hmm. So here's a couple of things that you can think about to actually cue yourself for confidence, to cue yourself for feeling like your most confident self. So the first one is um, try to maximize the distance. This is a really weird one. It's a really weird one. I want you to maximize the distance between your earlobe and your shoulder. Oh yeah, sure, sure. I know that sounds so weird, but what I often see on video is people hike up their shoulders and they tilt down their head and they go, Hey, good to see you. Yeah. And they do that because when we're a little nervous, a little anxious, we try to take up as little space as possible. That study I mentioned with the athletes, losing athletes want to take up as little space as possible. Mm -hmm. Why? They don't want to be noticed when we're in shame or defeat. We want less people to see us. So we tilt our head in, we crunch in our shoulders and we're trying to protect our vulnerable organs. We tilt our chin down to protect our jugular. We cross our arms or put our our arms tightly to our chest to protect our heart and our gut. Mm. So we do that instinctively. And what can happen is we're getting ready for a meeting or a video call. And what what are we doing? Checking our email. (laughs) So we have our, literally checking our email or checking our phone is the exact position of the feet by accident, right? Our, our shoulders are tucked. Our chin is tucked. Our arms are to our sides. We're blocking. And so people wonder why they're making bad first impressions or why they feel so awkward at the start of video call. It's because accidentally like this and then hello, and they pop up and brought and broaden. So the first thing is I want you to maximize, especially in the first few seconds of interaction, the few first few seconds before an interaction, maximize this between your ear and your shoulder. Just that alone, it's going to open up your chest. It's going to make your head go high. It will help relax your vocal cords. Second, I love a deep breath. No hyperventilating, right? I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want too much, right? And we also have to be very careful to not be Elizabeth Holmes. So Elizabeth Holmes, Theranos, if you watch that amazing documentary, Elizabeth Holmes, I think maybe read this study back in the day, which says the lower your voice tone, the more confident you're going to sound. And so she made her voice like this and she ended up talking like this, which sounded totally fake. So this is the lowest, right? I know it's crazy. This is the lowest end of your natural voice. And this doesn't matter if you're male or female, that the lower end of our natural voice does best. So breath, expansion, lowest voice. Can you fake it? I'm really wondering this because in this world today, there's so many manipulators, narcissists, um, gaslighters. There's just so many people trying to take advantage of you. And, and we get duped. Like, I mean, I've been duped in my life with people and I'm like, man, I feel like I'm usually a pretty good judge of character and I can feel their energy or get their, pick up more, maybe more cues than other people, but I've been there before. So can you fake it? And does it take like a sociopathic personality perhaps that actually believes in their BS to be the faker? Like, how Mm -hmm. do we decipher in that world? What can we, how do we, how do we not get taken advantage of? So I have been there too. I've been (laughs) taken, (laughs) I've been taken. This is why I started this research. I never, I never thought this would be a book. I did it because I got duped. I got duped and I said, never again, never, never again. What happened if you're willing to share? Yeah. So this, so I started this research 17 years ago, if you can believe it. Uh, This was the height of my awkward stage 
where um, I really trusted someone. I thought, again, I thought I was a pretty good judge of character. I had felt good vibes and good energy. Mm -hmm. However, there were red flags that I ignored. I had little hints about this person that I was like, uh, you know, that feeling, uh. yeah, kind of like, oh, well, yeah. or, you know, oh, yeah, okay. oh, what? I'm uh, sure that was fine. Yeah, was, yeah. He was having a bad day. Yeah, so yeah. I had a person that I really thought was great. And I, and as time went on, I kept ignoring the red flags. I kept ignoring the red flags. And of course, I ended up, it ended up that he was completely lying to me that um, so many of the things he had told me were completely false or had a tiny kernel of truth. Mm-hmm. 